Hindu! 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 This is the famous 25 year Hindu. <laughs> That's Michael John and McPhail. Right, two players from different teams meet in the street. And one of them says to the other, he says, I haven't seen you for a while, what have you been up to? And he goes, well, I don't know if you've heard, but I'm not playing for the teddy bears anymore. And he says, oh, why is that then? And he goes, well, it's all on account of something that old bastard Bill Struth says to me. And he says, aye? What did he say to you? And he says, eh, you're fired. <laughs> uh -huh. Good evening, Mr. Stroot. We didn't see you there. That I may say is perfectly obvious. You're right, sir. Aye, Michael John. For an old bastard, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Sorry, sir. So you should be. You know I don't allow that language in the dressing room, or in my office, nor anywhere in this building. We Scots are fortunate having an, in having a rich and expressive tongue. There's no need to supplement it with the language of the gutter. Oh, we were just sharing a joke, sir. I know. And there's an end to it. What were you doing, sir? I was scrubbing the dressing room floor. May I ask why, sir? Because it needed doing. You're the manager. I am still a servant of this club. The point is be thorough. Never forget the details. Oh, we will win the Scottish Cup, but I will still scrub this floor if I think it needs it. You see, endurance is the crowning quality, and patience all the passion of great hearts. I thought, David, you would understand that. Good night, lads. Good night, Good night Mr. Smith. David, a word, please. Now, you will have heard there is much talk of a hoodoo. Aye, aye, I know that. You will also know it's nonsense, and we have to show them it's nonsense. I want you to be captain of the team. Sir? The time has come for you to take responsibility. Show leadership. I accept, sir. Good. Now, how's young MacPhail coming on? Oh, he's doing fine, sir. He's a great player. That's why he was picked. Oh, I have high hopes of that young man. And he's always got a smile on his face, sir. That's the attitude. By the end of the season, we'll all have smiles on our faces. Now, I will not speak to you of tactics, David. I would not presume to. I am not a footballer. I never have been. But as one athlete to another, I can say that for me, smartness off the field brings smartness on the field and is the road to victory. But I will never tell you how to play the game. I pay men top wages for top football. There's surely something wrong if I have to tell them how to do their job. Now go out there, son. And do your best. Scottish Cup latest. Rangers make Celtic in the final. Rangers make Celtic in the final. Oh, this could be a lucky day. Shh, don't tempt fate. Place is mob. Aye. Susan, big gate today. Oh, it's a big gate. Add some bother getting over it. The tension in the dressing room. You could almost touch it. <laughs> April the 14th, 1928. Hamden in front of a crowd of 120,000. The game began! Half-time score, all equal. Rangers nil, Celtic nil. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that the team that scores first wins. Didn't you know I was going to say that? Because it's the obvious thing to say. I'm a no points. Good fair go, I hope, pie. Ah. Come on, lads. <laughs> Endurance is the crowning quality and patience all the passion of great hearts. Second half! Come on, Rangers! Oh. He's 11 minutes into the second half. And Morton, sweeping down the wing, passes to Fleming, who shoots for goal. It looks like a winner! Yes! Oh, but big stay, the Celtic fullback knows it's a winner and pulls the ball down! Oh, it's a penalty! A penalty for Rangers! And who's going to take it? The captain, Michael John, has stepped forward. He places the ball in the penalty spot. He moves back. A hush falls. Michael John is still standing there. I saw in a flash the whole picture of our striving to win the cup. I saw all the dire flicks of fortune that had beaten us when we should have won. The ball should have been in the net. It was on the penalty spot instead. If I scored, we would win. If I failed, we could be beaten. It was a moment of agony. Michael John moves in on the ball. He kicks it! It's in the air! And it's in the net! <laughs> And who will be next to the score? It looks like I'm with Phil! Yeah! Archibald! Yeah! Archibald again! Yeah! Final score, Rangers 4, Celtic uh -huh. yeah! Yeah! Oh! We've done it, son. Uh -huh. the end of the hoodoo. 
three cheers for our manager, Mr. William Street. Hip hop! Hey! Hip hop! Hey! Hip hop! Hey! Hip -hop. Hey! William Street, our manager. 34 years in the job, what an achievement. 18 championships, 10 Scottish Cups, 18 Glasgow Cups, and 20, 20 charity Cups. And the players he had. Who's there? Brown. George Brown, sir. Tom Hamilton. Jimmy Smith. Jerry Dawson. Ah, yes. The Prince of Goalkeepers. Willie Thornton. Uh, Thornton? I remember you as a lad with your well polished boots. Yes, sir. These your boots, Thornton? Yes, sir. How much am I paying you a week? One pound, sir. Anyone with boots as clean as yours deserves two pounds a week. Thank you, sir. It'll be in your wage packet next week. Thank you, sir. To my eternal shame, I didn't have the courage to tell him. It was my mother that polished my boots. <laughs> Jock Shaw. Tory Gillick. Oh, Gillick, I remember you. You, I made me laugh. It's about our wages, sir. Yes. Well, do we all get paid the same here? More or less the same, it varies with ability. A big George Young, for instance. Does he get paid more than me? Yes. Well, how's that? Because he's a better player than you. And in a close season when the wages are less, does he still get paid more than me? Yes. Well, how can he be a better player in the close season? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Gillick. Yeah, he made me laugh. I've taken down the sign from your door. Be brief. Time is precious. And don't forget the one on your desk. Always remember, the club is greater than the man. Scott Simon is the man who will take over from me. He is all that I seek in a ranger. And I am, as you know, uncompromising when I speak of this club. Shall I clear the rack of your suit? Oh, not all of them, Betty. I shall be back from time to time, making sure young Scott is coping all right. And he will cope. He will lead this club into orbit, making it famous not merely in Britain, but in world football. World football? European football, that was to be the next stage. And the Gels have been there before, of course, a tour of Austria in 1904, Finland, Denmark, unbeaten tour of the States in 1928, and then, of course, in 1945, with a wee set two with the Russians. Do you know I mean the Germans? Not at all. I mean the mighty Moscow Dynamo. Some boys, um, my father was a paid up member. Was he? What? A red under the bed? No, under the ground. He was a minor. <laughs> Help a pope. We bring greetings from the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. <coughs> Our glorious leader, Joe Stalin, holds close to his Georgian heart, city of Glasgow, birthplace of comrade John McLean. And we believe that the bonds between nations are cemented by international sport. Here, here. Promoting amicability and friendship. Here, here. And that is why we were pleased to obliterate Cardiff and to wipe your arsenal off the map. Oh, here, here, there's no need for that talk. <laughs> In play, Rangers, we would like to say this. We do not wish to see following player on pitch, Kesky. Imagine the cheek of that. Dictating the team you're going to be playing against. But it didn't work. Big George was there. Everybody that I speak to nowadays, um, when they talk about the penalty kick and that, they always say, well, I planned school that day to, to see that game. And I always, I always say to them, well, if you planned school to see the game, I must have planned school too to play in it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Wally, like, he's got a huge team, this one. <laughs> but uh, it was good to see uh, Big Smith the kick, Tiger Comey for the ball into the back of the net for our first one. And, uh, the second one I got from the penalty kick, and then a minute from time, Charlie Wilkins hit the post. Uh, very, very unfortunate to, not to win that day. But the Russians didn't take much time and get away back home to Russia after that game. You're in the middle of the game, right? In the middle of the game, your father's beloved Ivan's tried something known to Tory Gillick and leaping up and doing what? He noticed that they were playing with 12 men. 12 men? Yes, well, uh, we are footballers, not mathematicians. <laughs> But we would like to say that Rangers are finest athletes we have played. Easily the best team in Britain. We have no complaints. We have plenty of complaints a few years later when an unbeaten tour of the Soviet Union. Scott Simon was the manager. 
Well, two of the youngsters that went on that tour later went on to make names for themselves and Rangers. John Gregg and Wally Henderson. I heard a great story about Wally Henderson when the team was over there. You know. They were staying in the Metropole Hotel in Moscow, right? Yeah. And Wally Henderson decides to ring his girlfriend Mary back home in Green Gears. <laughs> Where? Green Gears. Where's that? It's just outside Airdrie. <laughs> Never heard it. Well, neither had the Russians. That's how it took them so long to get the bloody phone call for it. <laughs> Anyhow, four hours later, the phone finally rang. Hello? Hello, Mary. Is that you? <laughs> I know it. No, that's that's the Mary. Well, who is it? I'd say it's Jordy. Uh, Jordy Thomason. Who? Uh, I'm a retired miner. I, I was just passing the phone box here and I heard it ringing, <laughs> so I packed it up. All right, Jordy, you're facing the phone, right? I'm facing the phone. Right, well, if you turn round, you'll see a blue door. No, it's a red door, it's a phone box, a numpties. I bet if you look beyond that, you'll see a blue door. Oh, aye, oh, aye, aye, I see it, aye. Ah, well, could you go and chop it? Chop it? Aye, Jimmy Bell lives there. Oh, oh Jimmy Bell the China, oh, I know him, aye. Ah, well, could you ask him to tell his doctor Mary that she's wanted on the phone? Oh, uh, who answer like? Me! It's Wally Henderson of the Glasgow Rangers. I'm phoning from Moscow. Oh, Moscow Airshire. <laughs> no, Moscow Russia. Oh, we. Yeah, hang on, get stupid. No, no, no. No, no. You're making that up. No, no, straight up. Cost him a fortune and he never did get to speak to her. <laughs> See, the boys get back for that tour. They're mobbed at Renfrew Airport. Mm. Now that national football was all the rage and Scott Simon had his eyes fixed firmly in Europe. In 1955, that was the start of the European Cup. In 1960, that was the beginning of the European Cup Winners' Cup. Then you had the Intercity Fairs Cup, which became the European Fairs Cup. Then just the Fairs Cup and then finally... Youth a Cup! What? Youth a cup! <laughs> you a for cup, Hetty. You a for cup. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know if football was so complicated. How do you keep track of it all? You're my fan, Hetty. Sure of a fanatic. It's an all consuming passion that eats into the very fabric of family life. Right, it's the end of the season, I've got to really learn all my children's names and put the wife in for a remedial sex course. Oh, Max. <laughs> Is it worth it? Oh, aye, and it's worth it. For the joy and the pain and the glory and the fame, and even in the rain, it's worth it. To be able to say, it's my team. I was there. I cheered them on. Come on, the Glasgow Rangers! Come on, the teddy bear! We're going to Europe. Save all, save it, holy! To try and beat the Germans. Now they put their tights away To see how they play football In Florence, Naples, Rome We're fast and people fall to fall A rival back to stand at home So how about the Germans? We're strong in our defense And organized in our attack A star shines in old Moscow, oh. a dynamo is throbbing there. Oh, no. With slow and ponderous mighty steps comes forth the Russian bear. Oh. Oh. We're going into Europe. Three bombs, here come the Glasgow Rangers. And we're coming here to stay. First up, France. Oh, he, oh, he, oh. <laughs>
Well, no, really, it was a dirty game. Oh. We drew them in Glasgow and we drew them in Nice, and then they beat us in the playoff in Paris. 1960 saw us in the semi final, having been Anderlecht, Red Star, and Sparta. We went down against Eintracht. And guess who the champions were that year? The mighty oh. Senor! Yet again! You can't beat Real Madrid! You can't beat Real Madrid! You can't beat Real, you can't beat Real, you can't beat Real Madrid! The final was played at Hamden, and the 134,000 strong Scottish crowd gave Real a standing ovation for playing football that was out of this world. But we were learning, and we were getting better at the European game. In 1961, oh, we're going to Europe. Take oh, on, take it, here come the Glasgow Rangers, and we're coming here to stay. 1961 saw us in the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup. Yes! No, Fiorentina. Oh. We reached the final again in 1967. Yes! No, Bayern Munich. Oh. We reached the final again in 1972. Yes! yes. To get there, we had to beat Ren. Yes! yes. 2-1 Sporting Lisbon Yes Away goal Torino Yes 2-1 Bayern Munich Yes 3-1 And then at last the final And once again Moscow Dynamo In the new Camp Stadium Barcelona 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 Touched away that by Zikov. Evrajin. Charged in ten. No whistle. Dave Smith has it. To watch Colin Steen. Here's Steen. It's a goal. It's a goal by Steen. What a goal. Here's Dave Smith. Smith going up. It's a good ball. It's a goal. It's a goal by Willie Johnston. Rangers will be quite content to keep possession of the ball into the second half. As long as that score remains. Steen then, here's Willie Johnston with a chance. And it's a goal. It's a goal by Johnston. Right out of the blue. Rangers three up. We're victors now in Europe. Oh, hey. I was a wee bit concerned that because of the riot, the cop might get taken away for us, but that didn't help. Ah, but if you remember right, Max, we were banned for European competition for two years. And after an appeal for Willie Waddle, that was just the one year. And the European Cup Winners' Cup took pride of place in the trophy room. Yeah! yeah. We're the boys in blue. We saw it through. And we'll be back, be back, you bet. Exciting, eh? I'm jiggered. Yeah, no, I could fair murder a pint. Aye. Well, play your cards right. Just so happens I know a wee landlady who's quite accommodating. Ah, well, we know that, Hetty, but it's only a drink we're looking for. Yes, I'm all <laughs> Shh, shh. What? What's that? Where? Up there. Nebdy. Looks like. What can he be? Who? Lex McLean. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you well? Oh, it's a man where you've never seen a ghost before. <laughs> Are you well? Yeah. I smell like it. Well, I tell you, I was on the continent there following the Rangers. And when I got back, 
My head had broken out in big green lumps. Imagine me with big green lumps. So I went to the doctor, I says, here, doctor, go and eat a gander of these lumps. So he looks at them and he says, oh, for goodness sake. He says, where have you been? I says, I've been abroad. He says, here, you were never in one of the houses of ill repute, were you? I says, Christ, I was never out them. <laughs> ah, he says, that's what's wrong. You've got brothel sprouts. <laughs> See you later. Well, there you go. A wee goldie for my golden boy. Cheers, Harry. Cheers. So tell me, Max. See, when we were in Europe, what was happening domestically? Oh, I was just about to embark my second marriage, Hetty. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Rangers. I know, but while I was doing that, Rangers were going through a series of divorces, right? I mean, like Scott Simon, the manager, he kind of, he kind of like, had to resign. How? Well, Fib is a business, Hetty, right? And in business, you judge by results. So if you're not getting results, there's your cards. Thank you very much. Life can be cruel. Oh, hack it, Bob Crampsy. Uh, Scott Simon was very much in the Wilton's truth tradition, a believer in strict behavioural codes, you know? Although I think his genius was that he could take players, right? He could take players and mould them adroitly into a winning team. You know, like Richard Shearer, Caldo... Aye, aye, aye we know, we know. And Wilson. Wilson. But if he was this genius that you're saying he was... How come he got the boot, eh? It's results, eh? It'd be bad results. One in particular against Berwick Rangers. What can you say about that? Well, I suppose you could say they had a good goalie. <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke? Joke Wallace was the bloody Derek goalkeeper. <laughs> oh, <I> see. <laughs> Davey White, he was next for the manager's chair. Nah, he didn't last too long. Fair dues, fair dues. He did at least three great things for the club, though. He brought back Willie Thornton as assistant manager, and he signed Colin Steen and Alec McDonald. True. After that was Willie Waddle, we've talked a wee bit about him. Quite a bit. He became managing director in 73, and then your man's man, Jock Wallace, stepped into the fray. King Jock, ex-army, one of the old school. Loyal, dogmatic, a strict disciplinarian. His blood was orange, his language was blue, and he frequently saw red. <laughs> but he was a very successful manager for the club. Yep. Won the trebles in 76 and 78. Have I mentioned that? I no. So. Aye. And he also presided over the centenary match with the Celtic. <laughs> Uh, then John Gregg took over, managed the club for five years, but in my opinion, John's greatest achievements were as a player. Definitely. Captain the Jairs for, what, 13 years? Twice Footballer of the Year, a living legend, you're in my era now. And after that, who came back but King Jock? And a new star appeared in the firmament, signed by one John Gregg, MBE, one Alistair McCoy. Now MBE. you're talking my lingo. I'm always saying, I'm always saying it's the best part of uh, my job, certainly coming in here. Every day is a real pleasure, but um, what I'm paid to do here is score goals. That's it. Time for the book. The Blue Book. The Gospel according to Max. This is, the, this is the New Testament you're getting now, son. There you are, Max. Thanks, Eddie. It's all yours. The Gospel of the Rangers, according to Max, chapter 1. <coughs> Verily, brethren, I say unto you, a man came out of the north, whose name was David of the family of Holmes. And this man had hope in his heart and money in his wallet. And around the same time, brethren, 
A man came out of the west whose name was Lawrence of the family of Marlborough. And of oxen had he many, and fine gold also. And the two men travelled together, and saw a man from the east, who had of hair beneath his nose a multitude. And dressed all in fine raiment was he. And they knelt down, and bowed, and kissed his feet. For his feet were known throughout all lands, and great was the fame of his feet thereof. And beseeched him, saying thus, Master, come help us in our hour of need. For gold have we in great store, but of silver cups have we nain. An enemy at the gate, and clothed in green and white, hath taken them from hence, and there is great wailing and gnashing of teeth. And they opened the check books unto him, saying, Speak but the word, and all this shall be thine. And the man from the east rose up, whose name was Graham of the family of Sunes, and he came with them unto the fields of Ibrox, and the scribes of the land turned aside from drinking of the wine, and exclaimed thus. Hold the front page, for surely this Graham is the new Messiah, come out of the east to save the fields of Ibrox. And the man from the east called unto him men from the south of the family of Butcher, and the family of Woods, and the family of Stevens. <laughs> with offers of fine gold and herds of followers. So came these men unto the fields of Ibrox to make sport, be merry, and gather back the silver. And the man called Sunes led them forth. And as soon as he stepped onto the fields of Ibrox with all his glorious tribe, verily, he was made to step off again. <laughs> I, I was there that day, and I thought McCluskey made a bit of a meal at myself. Oh, really? Where we go? Aye. <laughs> and great were the dreams of this man called Sunes in the temple of Ibrox, which he now called home. The loins of his tribe were girded in the cloth of Armani, and the slippers on their feet from Gucci came they forth. And on each eve before the day of battle rested they together in an inn where dancing was there not, nor spirituous liquors, nor handmaidens either in the temple of Victoria's. <laughs> <laughs> and the people saw that this was good, but the elders of the tribe within the gates of Ibrox gathered together and muttered thus, Who is this Sunes? And why is he come amongst us? And the great silver cups, yea, where are they? This man hath promised, and when will they be delivered? <laughs> and hearing this great was the rage of Sunes, and he smote his fists upon the table, for mighty were the fists of Sunes, and known throughout the land. And he called unto him his servant Walter, and spake thus, He who would build the greatest team on earth must needs have about him men who are sleek and sure of foot. Let these same elders grant us further shekels, so we may command Graham of the family of Roberts to come forth. And we shall deliver these silver cups back to the halls of Ibrox. And lo, it was done, and still the elders muttered. But though we have this robo and drinker, yea, all the disciples of Sunes, even unto Richard of the family of Goth, and Oleg of the family of Kuznetso. <laughs> And what though we have the championship and great crowds and much mouth on us? The great silver cup of Scotland! We see it not within our walls. And on hearing this great again was the rage of Sunes, and he smote his breasts and a tea urn within the temple of MacDermott. <laughs> and he gathered unto him the scribes of the land, the unclean and the seedy, saying thus, I have sallied forth into the enemy's tents, and there found I a man called Johnson, <laughs> who is not of our tribe, and I have called him forth to dwell up. <laughs> so we, I don't think we should assign Morris Johnson. <laughs> I oh, know he's a great player. <laughs> but <laughs> but what? Well, I mean, he wasn't one of us, was he? He was basically a Celtic man. Well, 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 well. Let me ask you a wee question here, eh? See, if he's playing for the Jets, right? See, if he's playing for Rangers. Aye. Did he score any goals against Celtic? Aye. So what's your problem? He was a break with tradition. Well, exactly. What tradition are we talking about here, son? 
I mean, I made a careful study of this club, right? And I know, hand on heart, that the Rangers Football Club was formed with one purpose in mind and one alone. The pursuit and the enjoyment of the game of football. I mean, that's what I want to celebrate. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this, this is the 1990s, son, not the 1690s. What's that? <laughs> What's the point of fighting 300 year old battles or hurling abuse at <laughs> somebody just because you happen to believe something a wee bit different from yourself? Christ, we're nearly in the next century. I want Rangers up there with the best. David Murray. David Murray has poured money into this club. To put the guy on a team that is capable, God willing, one day of winning the European Cup. And you want to say to him, no, you can't have Romari. Can't have Maldini. Can't have Baggio. Christ, can you imagine Walter Smith going up to Baggio? Oh, by the way, Roberto, which school did you go to? <laughs> This is the Rangers we're talking about here. Super Rangers. A team that can compete with the best. A team for the 21st century. Now I want to make a wee toast there, right? Oh. The David Murray, whose commitment to this club is second to none. To Walter Smith, who will lead us to our seventh successive league title, no matter what. To Mark Hately, who's a pure dish. Oh. To all the great names of the past. Richie, McCloy, Jardine, Greg, Mathis, McKinnon, McDonald, Russell, McMillan, McLean, Miller, Anderson, Wilson, Baxter, John Kitchen, Brad, Thornton, Mathis, Johnny Hubbard, Greg. Hey, lads, look at this. What do you see, Moses? Well, I don't know. It could be a promised land. I certainly think it's the future. I see a sign in big bold letters, Rangers FC, and a team playing in light blue colours. And as they kick the ball about the park, thousands upon thousands of people are singing and cheering and shouting, come on the Rangers, come on the Glasgow Rangers. I know there is an idea in some minds that we at Ibrox possess some secret potion for winning matches. The secret potion is a will to win, imagination, determination, a cheerful positive outlook, and something just as good as any of these, the ability to accept defeat in the proper spirit. Any team that can smile in defeat is more likely to win the next time out. This is a great club. The honor has been mine in serving it. Carry on, my good friend. 